so we have here the uh, Game Boy Advance, the original model, the wide set one. Uh, as you can see, it's very, very beat up. Uh, old busted up screen here, some pretty deep scratches, got some paint and discoloration all around. Uh, backside, no battery cover. Same thing, paint. Looks like paint was gotten into the screw holes and everything as well. Um, but I have ordered a replacement off of eBay. It wasn't very expensive. It was like 15 bucks. It came with, let's take a look, set this aside. Tri-wing screwdriver, they were nice enough to give us one. New membranes, a new sticker on the back, which is nice because this one actually had already lost the sticker on the back. We have a new screen, which hopefully will be good. I know that some of these screens have a habit of being, uh, like, not completely transparent, not completely clear. They'll have, like, a kind of fogginess to the, to the glass, which uh, hopefully this is not the case. For 15 bucks, uh, I'm not expecting too much, but, you know, it could be worse. And I, I'm sure either way, it's going to be, I mean, it's going to be better than this. So, the shell, obviously, front and back. Includes the battery cover, which is nice. No sticker here. There's supposed to be a uh, Nintendo for support, call this phone number sticker right here, but there's not one. You also get all the other parts and everything. These on the side, L, R, uh, yeah. And new buttons and all the screws and everything. Um, you will also need a small set of screwdrivers. I'm not saying this is the best one or anything like that. But this is what I have, Stanley brand. Um, specifically, you will need the Phillips head one. So I'll grab that. And luckily, I also have my own set of tools, just in case this does not prove sufficient. But, you know what? Let's go ahead and try to do it with this screwdriver. We'll start off by unbuttoning this system. There are seven screws in the system. Six tri-wing, one, two, three four, five, six, and one Phillips head screw. So I'm gonna start with the Phillips. Sorry if my camera work isn't super great this video. I've never done something like this. Six tri-wing screws. Hopefully this will actually take. As I feared, this is a, a little bit of a small tipped screwdriver here. So, again, luckily, I have my own set. I'm not saying that this, these are the best brands or the only brands, even. Um, this is just what I use. Uh, I guess I'll put a link to this item in my video description if this ever sees the light of day. But, and the good thing about this one is it's actually magnetized on the end, so I can actually, whoops, pull the screw out. Let's go back to this one that was giving me some trouble. Cool, so that's all seven screws. As you can see, I've exploded them out from where their normal positioning is. So we can actually now undo this back panel. There we go. As you can see, this part of the battery is actually uh, attached to the back panel. There's also this metal frame in here that needs to be uh, removed. Uh, I guess not actually, because the replacement actually comes with one, so maybe I won't replace it. Uh, then again, maybe I will. This is actually a Nintendo part, so I mean. Voila, it's off. This thing is busted up. I don't know if you can see or you can tell. This is like cracked and been glued back together. Oof. There you go. Gross. And this one over here. Similar situation. Not quite as bad as the other side, but still pretty busted up. This thing has been through the ringer. Okay. Now we move on to the actual heart of this machine so I actually have already opened this machine up just to make sure that 
everything worked and it wasn't missing anything. And in fact, it was missing stuff. Before you can remove this board, there are supposed to be, I believe, three screws in the system. There's supposed to be one here, which there is. There's supposed to be one here, which there is. And there's supposed to be one right here, which there is not. You can see there's not, not one right here versus these two places here. I'm glad that this came with extra screws so that we can fill in the gaps where they're supposed to be. Let's go ahead and take those out. First, I'm gonna take off these plasticky side bits. And then with this, you gotta be careful, there's a little tongue, like a, a, a prong on the side, or inside, I mean. Both sides, boom. Now we'll take out these. Um, this, this one, I believe, is already a little bit stripped, so I do have to be a little careful removing this one. Oh no, this was the one that was stripped. This one. This screw is going to have to be thrown away. Uh, I'm going to set it up here. So now at this point, uh, you still can't remove this board. There's one last thing you have to do. Um, this ribbon cable is what connects the screen to the board. And I don't want to damage this ribbon cable. So I'm going to get a spudger, basically just a flat piece of plastic. You can use like the end of your screwdriver, I'm sure. So this is the spudger, uh, pointy end here, flat end here with a little tooth cut out of it. I'm going to use the flat end on this ribbon cable. There are two tabs on each side. I'm going to use the spudger to open up the tabs. As you can see, the ribbon cable is already loosening. And then I'm going to very carefully remove the ribbon cable using the spudger. Now that it's detached, I can actually take this board off. There we go. Now let's take a closer look at this board. This wheel looks like they painted it somehow inside as well. So that's great, because I have no idea how to remove this piece or replace this piece. And therefore I don't know if I can clean this piece up, but hopefully it won't be too noticeable. Uh, the speaker here also has some paint on it. Um, and if you notice here, this is the power switch. It actually, it doesn't click. It's very slidey, very, very loose. What actually clicks is in the front panel. There's a, a tab here that has a little nub at the bottom here. And in the board, there's another little nub and it just clicks against that. Like that. Like I said, I've already opened this up, cleaned it up a little bit, but oftentimes, especially with this system, you'll have some gross stuff in here. Uh, I cleaned it up with some isopropyl alcohol on a Q-tip. You don't really want to like go too much into this one from what I can tell, because there's like a magnet in here, and like some of the dust that gets caught in there is just like metal bits. Like especially the stuff towards the, the center of the, the, the speaker. Back to the front panel, we'll take out the power switch. Take out the membranes here. That's start and select. Very beat up, very gross. That's the A and B button. Throw those out there. And yeah, as you can see, these were really torn up. I noticed that when I last opened this up that the membrane was actually like, like messed up it was actually like torn and everything like that i'm sure you can see it it's not supposed to do that to my knowledge it's supposed to be like one squishy piece like this not like opening holes like like flaps like that awfully nice of them to give us new membranes with a new case last but not least take out the screen now you're going to be tempted to pull it by the ribbon cable i'm sure especially because it sticks out as such uh, you don't want to do that. This here is very, very difficult to replace and very expensive to replace. Um, especially with uh, if you're trying to do like a 101 screen from a GBISP 101, 
those are getting really hard to find. So be careful with these. Easiest way I found to do it is just very slightly flex like this, and it'll loosen the adhesive so that you can take the screen out. There you go. Getting it loose, loose. And then, since I've already removed the screen before, I'm just gonna come underneath here and very gently lift it out. There you go. Nice screen. Everything's good on the screen. Looks really good. It's just the glass that's like gross and messed up. Um, if, you're, if your screen is good and you want to keep, uh, if the glass is good and you want to keep the glass, then one of the things you can do, and I actually did it with this because I plan to try and remove some of these really deep scratches down the line uh, because this is original Nintendo glass screen. Um, I'm go you can put some isopropyl alcohol here and just let it sit for a little bit. Uh, oh, and there's, I'm sorry, there's a rubber gasket. Ew, gross. Um, yeah, you put some isopropyl alcohol here. You really don't need that much. And then you just let it sit for like five minutes. It'll loosen the adhesive and then you just push it out very gently around the screen. Like I said, I've already done that. So as you can see the screen just comes out. This is the color that the system is supposed to be. This, this GBA is supposed to be the glacier blue, glacier clear white color. This also doesn't have the little light, the little plastic light. Now that it's all taken apart though, we can put this bad boy all back together again in the new case. Um, the glass can be applied last, but we're gonna do the screen first. First thing you wanna do, make sure there's no smudges on here, no no fingerprints, no anything like that. I already cleaned mine off uh, and I made very sure not to touch it with my hands. So, you know, spray it down with some compressed air. Get all of that grossness off of it, all the dust. You really don't want any dust on there because you will see it. If you don't think you'll see it, you are deluding yourself. Let's put this little gasket. Since these are all gross and dirty, the original ones, the original membranes and parts and everything, I'm gonna switch them out for the new stuff. Oh, and look, they were nice enough to give us a new light piece. So this piece is actually the, uh, the little plastic bit that goes over the hole where the power LED is supposed to be. Um, so I'll go ahead and put that in. On this piece, there are like indentions on the head here. That goes around this post right here. Um, so that way it doesn't move around or anything. There you go. Let's put the pieces in. Boom. A and B buttons. There's only one way they really want to fit. A has two tabs on top and one tab on bottom. B has one tab on top and two tabs on bottom. Um, and I believe the A button is the taller of the two. So you put A up here and B down here. Yep new membranes. I also don't have my entire setup for this, so hopefully the next time I try and record something like this, it'll look a lot better. Look a lot more professional. A and B mem membrane has a little hole here that goes on this post right there above the A and B buttons. There you go. There's a small hole for the post down here as well. Uh, as you can see here, there are no flaps on this membrane. It's not supposed to have flaps, which makes sense when I did try to use the old uh, device. It was very difficult to push up, down, left, right because the, the membrane was really torn up, literally. Uh, so same thing, there's two little holes here, two little uh, tabs, and there are a couple of posts that it goes around. This one right here, very small, kind of hard to see. This one right here, and this one right here. And last but not least, start and select. Uh, there's only one way this fits. Follow the curvature of the hole there. Boop, let's get this board in. There you are. 
Now we'll reattach the ribbon cable. So what I like to do is you kind of feed it in here. Some people like to use some people like to use a spudger to like hold it in place, hold it up. Um, I'll do it again here to show you what I did. But I like to just kind of gently pull it back and feed it in to the to the uh, I don't know what this is called the socket I guess. I'm very new to this. This is a hobby thing for me. I'm sure some people who know what they're doing are like, oh my god, what's going on? You fool! It's in place now. Now you have to close these tabs. And I'll use the spudger for that. But one thing to note is when you close one side, the other side will reopen slightly. So, let me close this one here. Show you. That side's closed. Now I'm going to close this side. See, uh, and sometimes it'll be a little bit more pronounced than that. This one was very minor, but it did move up, reopen a little bit. So make sure you close that, both sides. Make sure it's firmly shut, locked in place. That way the ribbon cable doesn't go anywhere and your screen connection is good. Now I'm going to temporarily reattach this back housing. Make sure everything's functional. Would you look at that? No picture. So we have picture now. All right, now we're gonna button up the back housing for real. Now that it's all back together, let's put the glass screen on it, the replacement screen. As a reminder, this is what the old screen used to look like. Ew, gross. All scratched up. And here is the new one. <laughs> 